Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm from Ukraine. And my name is Richard from London, the capital of Great Britain. And we are in Lviv, one of the most beautiful and important cities in Ukraine and in an even more important place in Lviv, that is a frontline kitchen. Richard, can you share your story with Frontline Kitchen and how it began for you? Yeah, so I turned up here on the 20th of June last year, um, walked into the driveway and at that time, as it still is now, it's called Lviv Volontersky Kuchnia, but uh, Frontline Kitchen's the, the online presence of it. And uh, I turned up into this driveway and uh, Luda, the big boss, was standing there and she said, Richard, uh, there's a box full of carrots, uh, go, go cut them up effectively. Because I said, I want to volunteer and that's how it started. And after two weeks, they realized I wasn't going to leave and kind of accepted me in as family. And uh, yeah, I've been here most days ever since. Um, tack. Did you cook before this experience back in London? Uh, Did you like yeah. doing that? Now and again. Yeah, yeah. not frequently though. But uh, the nice thing with this kitchen is it's very accessible. Uh, anyone with any level of cooking experience can help out because the majority of stuff is just cutting up vegetables, shredding and then dehydrating. So uh, the cooking aspect comes down to you know, boiling a chicken in a bucket, effectively. So there's no no speciality expertise needed, just uh, closely guarded recipes that we follow when we're packaging it up. So. But I know from Ukrainian soldiers how important it is to get access to this homemade food. Yeah. From one point of view, of course, they are supplied with all this dried food, extracts and so on, but when they get the taste of borscht mm. or other things, that's def definitely important. What are the feedbacks that you receive? Why food is so important in this yeah. war, in the victory? So we, we had a soldier, and this was my first, uh, first two months here, um, and he came in, uh, he was just picking up a load of food to head back out east, and he came in and he said, everyone stop now, like stop what you're doing. Uh, Ukrainian guy, but was speaking English. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, I, I need to tell you something. And everyone stopped there, turned around, looked at him and listened. And he said, you do not realize how important it is what you guys do for us on the front. The morale, there is nothing higher than having a beautiful bowl of borscht in front of you. Yeah. You know, and all of us were just, you know, almost breaking down in tears <laughs> all gave him a massive hug because it's kind of really showing and giving us the meaning as to why we do what we do every single day. Um, because every one of these uh, international volunteers, they are here every single day. So they, they may come to volunteer for a month and it's, you know, 12 to late, eight hours every single day without a break or a rest um, to supply our guys on the front with borscht and halobsi and a million different kinds of soups. So um, we know how important it is, but for a soldier from the front to tell us there's no bigger morale boost is just the most heartwarming thing for us. Definitely, that's the story. Like, I, I feel the emotions you're talking about. And as a Ukrainian, I'm very grateful for all the international volunteers who choose to come here. It's still dangerous yeah. and uh, it's a difficult job to do. But, and you can choose any other travel destination, yeah. <laughs> but you come here in this challenging times to support Ukraine. How many of your international friends, volunteers are typically working here? So between, uh, between 30 and 40 uh, international volunteers per day. Um, the other day we all went out for dinner and there were you know, 30 plus people sat around a table from, I think it was uh, something like 24 different nationalities. Oh, that's interesting. Around one table, and we just listed everyone off. Because I couldn't believe it, that there were that many nationalities. And I got everyone to list like, off for saying which countries they were from. And yeah, it was right. Can you name any just, countries like... Uh, well, uh, we have a lovely wall behind us with, with, with all of the different flags on. The main ones are uh, Germany, lots of Americans come by. We have people coming from Australia, from New Zealand, from like... Cambodia and like Venezuela and you're, you're flying from all parts of the world to come volunteer at this little kitchen in Lviv that's smaller than most people's kitchens back home. But that's beautiful and that's like an embassy of all the good and tasty things. Can you tell us any favorite recipes that people from the front lines are asking for? Like uh, yeah, products it, it that may, they want? may sound very uh, silly to say and very obvious but it is always borscht. 
<laughs> they're just like, it's just borscht, borscht and more borscht. And we were packaging up all of these bags to go out to the front. And they're like, please can we get some extra helpings or extra servings of borscht each time? Um, and I've personally tried it and it is the best borscht I've had in all of oh, Ukraine. Yeah. And this is dehydrated and then rehydrated. And I've had a lot of borscht in Ukraine, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just absolutely perfect. So I see why it's a world, world favorite and a troop favorite. I wanted to ask you if you like borscht or what is mm. your favorite Ukrainian food, but you you've know. answered the question. Um, tell me, please, this is uh, a question that I like asking people who are not Ukrainian. After you have come here, uh, what <coughs> things surprised you? What was different that you imagined or expected? Uh, different. I guess when I got off the, the, the bus and the train in Lviv the first time, I kind of looked around, looked at the sky and I was like, where are all the missiles and the burning buildings and the grey dust? Because the Western media portrays it as like, oh, Ukraine is a very dangerous, unsafe place. And you know, you walk into Lviv and you look around and you go, wow, these are the most beautiful buildings and restaurants and bars and you just instantly feel at ease. But the whole world had been telling you that this was a war zone here. Uh, and it couldn't be further from the truth. It's, yeah, incredibly pleasant. So that, that was a, a big surprise. The things that shocked me or that were different, I don't know, probably the driving. Very, <laughs> they don't really you know, care too much about traffic lights over here or zebra crossings. You know, eating burgers with black gloves. Oh yeah. Nowhere else yeah. in the world, you know? <laughs> that looks weird. Every like... volunteer is like, why are they giving me gloves to eat my food? Yeah, we do that, guys. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but apart from that, I can't really think of too many things that are different. It's, it's very kind of European capital, Lviv, European capital vibes that you get here. Tak. Thank you so much. And a question, an important one. How can people help uh, Frontline Kitchen? Uh, by going to volunteeringukraine.com. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the way you find out how you can come to Ukraine, first of all, and then help out at the kitchen, but also help out with orphanages, with like teaching children English, with rebuilding Ukraine, you know, off in uh, Kyiv and uh, yeah, various places along the front now. If you just want to help us directly, you can follow Frontline Kitchen on Twitter. That's at Frontline Kit. We will um, leave all the links below cool. this video. So yeah, volunteer here. Uh, just follow us on Twitter, share what's actually happening in Ukraine. Because, I mean, this is informational warfare. We need to tell people what's happening in the world, especially when modern mainstream media right now is forgetting about everything and not, you know, mentioning on the news even when Kyiv gets hit by a missile strike during the day. It, it doesn't make breaking news anymore like it should. Yeah, that's awful um, when people get used to this and, like, think it's, it's just the way it is. Yeah. So, yeah, share what's going on. Um, donate so that we can get more vegetables. That's always, always handy and helpful. Yeah, and we're always trying to raise money for drones just like everyone else and cars for the front. So anything that anyone can do to help will yeah. help us. That's not difficult, but that's very important and changing, life changing. Thank mm. you so much. No pleasure. And you will show us around. Give you a tour. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> yeah, the side of my face this whole time. I've just realized I didn't see where the camera was. I should have turned more. No, but they like it when it's a okay. dialogue. Like. <laughs> I'm also saying like <laughs> they only have one side of me but so uh, what you can see actually on your left here is a massive pile of succini um, so this stuff gets either donated by local farmers or by food distributors um, or we buy the produce um, and then all gets processed over here so we're getting it cleaned first of all and then you come over to our chopping station with the wonderful chopping Svetlana station. my favorite person on the planet yeah. Yeah. my lovely Hello. Svetlana yeah. <laughs> uh, and over here in this outside space uh, during the summer months this whole table is surrounded by international volunteers and Ukrainian volunteers um, that will chop up the zucchini into like sizes that can either go into a shredder mm -hmm. or into thin slices that can just go straight into the dryer because everything gets dried out before um, being packaged up. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, so I will now take you inside to the kitchen. This is what we call seamless filming, you know. Loads of people around, like natural. <laughs> National Geographic. <laughs> National Geographic, exactly. So everything that you see out there that gets chopped up into pieces goes through this hole. So this machine 
feeds 15,000 soldiers per day. You know, everything shredded through this, either into boxes up here or into buckets, as you saw up there. Um, and then this is what goes into the dryer, which you follow me. Hopefully your camera won't steam up because it's a bit hot in here. We've got our lovely St. Javelin stickers, of course. And in here, you will find potato, which is currently oh. dehydrating after being shredded by that famous machine that you saw out there. So we've got potato in here. I assume it's on it. We've got apple and stuff in here. And this is all being dehydrated. Very, very tasty. Mm. And when it's halfway through drying, I'll give you a piece too. When it's halfway through drying, it tastes almost yeah, like a... Yeah, I love uh, it. This is a very good uh, dessert, right? It's mm. good for your health and it's tasty. So it tastes like um, a miniature apple crumble when it's halfway through cooking. Because it just starts getting the sugar kind of content spiking in it. And you have the little bit of the crisp, but also the juiciness still inside. So this is horacha, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. What? Horacha? Um, buckwheat. Horechka. 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 Jeez, I've been here a year, hey? Uh, horechka. <laughs> oh no, sorry, this is horechka. Yeah, that's this what surprised is like me. It looks like oatmeal. Beans, something. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, not important. Something the ladies know, that's, that's what's all important. So, all of these trays then get taken out, bashed into, let me pull this down, smacked into one of these buckets, and all the dried ingredients then get poured into one of these bags down here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or into boxes and buckets. Um, and then all of those ingredients go off to a completely different location, which isn't here, but I'll show you the end product. Now. Yeah, that's interesting. I wanted to ask you to show this final. Oh, this is a very special place filled with people who love Ukraine and who are doing a very important job. And like bringing this homemade food to front lines is a game changer. And this is something that demonstrates clear difference between Ukrainians and Russians and the world that supports Ukraine and understands how important it is to stand for your values, for your homes and still feeling the support in the most dangerous places. Guys, I'm really glad to meet Eugenia from Ukraine. I'm Anna from Ukraine. She has her own YouTube channel and I greatly encourage you to subscribe because she has lots of interesting updates and she's also a part of Frontline Kitchen. Uh, Eugenia, can you tell us about your YouTube channel? What made you start it? And uh, actually a brief introduction of you. I have not been done YouTube uh, till the invasion, it's true. Uh, I was in my apartment in Dnipro. I was sleeping after evening shift. I woke up from explosions. It was my scariest morning ever because I have not experienced it never in my life. And uh, I woke up, I was in Dnipro and in two days we fled in the uh, Lviv district. So, and uh, I was watching um, President Zelensky daily updates and he told us that our victory and our resistance, uh, it depends on each Ukrainian, both civilians and militaries. And uh, he told that everyone should do something to uh, make our victory closer on their own place. And I just uh, realized that I know English a little bit and I can use this skill to tell truthful information about Ukrainian life uh, during the war and fight Russian propaganda. Because they are spending millions, millions of dollars on propaganda and Ukraini Ukrainians unfortunately have no these resources. So I started to voluntarily uh, doing this, started to do a short videos for First in Instagram, after in YouTube. And I was a part of small group in Telegram chat. Uh, we have been given uh, tasks uh, to highlight some informational uh, information, resilience. Yes, informational resilience. But now I'm just alone. Uh, yes, but you're not alone. You have your <laughs> subscribers. Yes, yes. Now I have tiny, tiny community, and I'm grateful for this community because we support each other, and uh, uh, I can speak out about Ukraine. How did your life change? Your personal life as a Ukrainian change within this a year and a half? My 
ch life changed dramatically and uh, because I have been living to Dnipro, all my connections, all my social uh, ties and colleagues were in Dnipro. Everyone uh, fled to different districts of Ukraine, someone uh, fled abroad uh, and I left all my previous life, my apartment. We have been done uh, a repairment, renovation in our apartment only month before the invasion. We were so happy because we, are, we were saving for this renovation for so long. Yeah, and uh, we fled in Truskavets, uh, rented two tiny rooms. I had to work my full-time job continue. I was lucky not to lose it. So in this tiny room, on uh, I was working on the couch. I have no any working table. So all everything was changing and uh, all my social lives, uh, my relatives, my mom stayed in Dnipro. And I just start starting over. And how do you feel yourself now in Lviv? I see that you are a member of many communities. <laughs> many? <laughs> Not so many. Uh, yes, I, I just uh, figure out that I'm alone only with my husband and I need to do something uh, to feel my contribution to our resistance. I started to do in videos, but it was not enough for me and I decided to join some volunteer group to do something with my hands because sometimes if you're mentally overwhelmed, you need to just reboot. Uh, physical yeah. reboot and uh, this kitchen become my like escape from mentally overwhelming but I realized that this is actually also community I have found a lot of many friends here in kitchen also IDP internal displaced per, uh, people from Eastern Ukraine and from uh, people from UK Canada USA this is unbelievable I think this is a very beautiful example actually of how you save yourselves from difficult sorts and like all the mental state that we are in building new connections and helping ukrainian armed forces i know you have a beautiful t-shirt can you tell us more about it and yes this t-shirt was given to me uh, by my friend show it yeah guys <laughs> by my friend from us he is a tactical medic um, he arrived from us instead of having a vacation and enjoying comfortable life he came to ukraine and went to the front line close to the front line to be a medic he has been working there for months or three weeks or something uh, living in the bombed hospital without water, without electricity. He actually sacrificed all modern convenience of his previous life and shared with us our hardships. And I'm grateful to all people. Guys, if someone from US is watching, I'm grateful to all volunteers. Also to UK, to Canada, to Euro Union, everyone. Yeah. And I am grateful to Zhenya that she invited us to see Frontline Kitchen and for all that you are doing. Remember to subscribe. Remember to come to Frontline Kitchen, guys, and help us out. Lviv is a relatively safe area. I do not guarantee that it's 100% safe. Guys, you need to figure out what you are doing. But I encourage you, if you want to come, please come here. We have a nice community. Thank you. Погано. Ні, все до чого. <laughs> Добре, тоді Саша він постійно да. посміхався, да. Cool. Beautiful. Uh, one of the people that was uh, volunteering here an illustrator and I said, uh -huh. "Hey, we want to create a patch for the soldiers uh, that we supply the food to." Oh. And she came up with this. So, this is a battle babusia with yeah. a we beetroot for Boriak, of <laughs> That's course. Beautiful. Uh, the Lviv line. Yeah. Obviously with the Cossack quiff. Uh, RPG because she's a badass. Um, yeah. And then this was the original symbol of Lviv Volontarsky Kuchnia. And it's hands holding the symbol of the armed forces, but because there's no coloring inside of this, it means that we support all areas of the armed forces, um, not just air, ground, sea, yeah. whatever. So, That's very eloquent. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> that is one exciting thing. And then these are just, yeah, cat tourniquets that you've seen a million times, chest seals. Um, and these come from the wonderful people on Twitter because we're no longer just a kitchen cooking for the soldiers on the front. We're medical supplies, we're uh, evacuations, um, geez, everything. We're buying drones, we're buying cars, it's whatever the guys on the front need, we now do. Uh, if an orphanage needs help, we're there. People can message us online and we sort it next day. So. Okay, so this is what you saw drying out in the machines back there. 
So this is a uh, cabbage? No, this is apple. No? No, it's not apple. I think it's zucchini. Oh, no, zucchini. this is a zucchini. Yeah, of course. Uh, zucchini's in that one. Lots of different things. And people also dry these out. So we cut and shred everything. And mm -hmm. then some people actually take it to their home. own home. To so local Lavivians uh, take it home and dry it themselves. So it's not just the kitchen effort. It's mm -hmm. the whole community of Lviv. So I will show you all of the fantastic packets now. The moment of truth. <laughs> da, 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 da. So this is our world famous borscht. If I get you one of the larger packets, then you can actually borscht see the chili. Which means bon appetit and together to, to victory. our victory. And then over here we have very nice. oh. and It actually smells even through packaging in a very good way. Or maybe it is the atmosphere around. Oh my god! Holupsi, and this is holupsi, guys! I know many of you love holupsi. By the way, most of my subscribers like holupsi more than vareniki. Well, we can send them out a packet. <laughs> you just you do some kind of competition thing, raise money for the troops, and okay. they can of course have the first ever given away packet because everything goes to you our see, guys on the front. Very different dishes, but all traditional Ukrainian and loved by our soldiers. And this is Horechka. <laughs> Horechka. Yes. You know, buckwheat. Buckwheat is one of buckwheat our soup. favorite buckwheat so soup. So many, like so all of even these. Even when you are really far away and you are in danger, you are in trenches, you can still have access to homemade food. These are beautiful people. Kasha, of course. Porridge, like porridge, sweet porridge. Sweet porridge. You see, and it's healthy and it's nutritious. And so beautiful. And so beautiful. I mean, <laughs> yeah. If that matters, but yeah. Yeah, it does. Imagine receiving that in the trench, just like wow. So this is 15 varieties of leaf from the Carpathian Mountains. Every single leaf cut by hand, and then with this box shoved into the packet. Um, and then uh, lemon and dried fruits are added to the top to kind of season it and giving it yeah, yeah. a this bit more beauty. By so. the way, I'm a fan of uh, Carpathian teas. They are good for like the feelings. Yeah, and everything that we do here, whether it's the teas or the meals, they say is all about like healing as well. Exactly. What the Ukrainians have been saying to me, so I'm, I'm going to trust and believe them, you know. Yeah. Food is very important for the feeling of uh, comfort and if we can bring any comfort to the front lines. This, meant to be unboxed on the front, but I'll unbox it here for you. Uh, and then we will box it back, can <laughs> you say? Box it back, yes. <laughs> Famous energy bar, so. Oh, oh it's very That's good. actually a different one. This is with uh, coconut, Energy I think. bar with coconut and mm. dried fruit, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, nuts. This, this is actually a new one. Um, and a new version. We normally have uh, our normal energy bars, which I'll probably be able to find one for you. Oh, it says prunes, um, uh, dried apricots, cranberries, uh, walnuts, sunflower seeds, raisins, honey, and some oil. So, do je smash now. Um, but the normal ones I'll show you, uh, a very strong, like, smoked prune kind of smell. That's like our signature energy bar that we uh, send out to the front. Um, so, I will find you one. But they go so so quickly because these are uh, so essential and they just every soldier has them in the pocket at and all they times give energy. to be able to you can... yeah, have a snack on the go um so that's why they are always the first to go and also we have instant meals which i'll show you around the corner da, 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 da. once again unboxing the stuff for the troops oh wait here we are i don't have to this time so over here we have the instant servings of our meals for the guys on the front so this is exactly four trenches because what they would have is they would have a flask full of hot water and then they would have one of these and then if they're pinned down for you know 11 hours they can still pour this into the flask shake it up and in five minutes it's ready to eat so it is a meal when there's no other chance to you can't create a heat source of course um, and you have no other option and it's like okay we have a couple of these in our pockets and we know at all times we can have a yeah. beautiful nutritious meal yeah you know on the that's, front that's important yeah so the whole thing and our like signature cake is honey and walnut cake but um this one looks really good yeah, that's nice you know <laughs> ah. i'm sorry <laughs> um but these also come to us baking hot so they turn up with the box and it's still boiling hot that is a very typical um, ukrainian taste is it? by okay. the way I didn't actually know that. Yeah, I just thought it was some, like some every, recipe that we came uh, up with. Every lady who is not even good at cooking can cook can it, make one but, of these. It, okay. but it's very tasty, very nutritious and very aromatic. Okay. Honey, 
Uh, uh, yeah, and we walnuts. add loads of walnuts across the top. So yeah. within the next 30 minutes, you'll see another person, because this is done by the local community. Mm -hmm. So we give it. everyone the raw ingredients, and in each and every home in Lviv, they're all cooking these cakes Real and then homemade. bringing them in. Literally homemade. Um, so we have like three or four ovens, so we can make, you know, 10, 20 a day, but we have hundreds of these coming every day mm -hmm. and hundreds going out every day. That's beautiful. So they delivered to us fresh and hot and they're put in the car sometimes, still hot from the oven. And these go straight out to the troops so that every day they have fresh cake with their lovely Carpathian's tea on the front for oh, breakfast, lunch yeah. or dinner. <laughs> You're like, can you take me to the front? <laughs> I'd love to have some of that cake. Yeah, you see, we will have more volunteers to the front lines. <laughs> exactly the same thing, but this is in a foil packet. We want to put every one of them in these, but we can't afford to. Okay. So. Back to the That's thing of good. if you can help us or Support. some uh, way to help the troops, it's just get us these packages because I think they're about 11 cent a packet and we just can't afford to that pay money. that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this way they don't have any, uh, they don't have to wash up their bowls or anything after eating it. So they can just pour the hot water in here, wait five minutes, done, and then chuck that away. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, probably and, not too good for the environment, but. <laughs> and follow Frontline Kitchen on Twitter. There you can get all the updates and information where to donate to. Yes, right? exactly. And fun videos every day of oh, whatever's going on at the kitchen. So That's lovely. Here on Slava. Um, still fresh, still, you know. Hello. 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 <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Sasha. <laughs> Sasha, yeah. Sasha, come here. You're the famous Sasha. So many beautiful people here and one of our friend subscribers. Peter from Switzerland. Yes. Yula is another beautiful volunteer that I've met on the volunteer kitchen. Can you share your story? How did you come here? Okay. Um, originally, I'm from Zaporizhia, but I have been living in Lviv since 2016. All the time, uh, before big uh, invasion, I bought some stuff uh, near the church. It, it was like ch um, charity weekend. Uh, every Sunday they bake some uh, cake, some food, and I uh, bought it and like I help uh, army like in this way and when the uh, big war started i decided i know this place i know these people uh, all the time i wanted yes. to join them but i didn't have some option as not option like sort of possibility to do this and uh, when the war started in the end of the uh, february i decided to come to this place and uh, started helping them so almost a year and a half uh, yeah, of yeah. Work here. 28th of uh, February. I remember this day. All of us remember this uh, yeah, yeah, time. Yeah. And it's a very inspirational place, but at the same time, it's really hard work with chopping, carrying, drying. Uh, what adds you strength? Maybe you can share some inspiring stories or just the country. What gives you strength to continue volunteering until we win? Of course, uh, you know, we had a different period of time since this uh, kitchen. Like, firstly, a lot of people in the kitchen. We didn't have uh, all these constructions here. We didn't have enough tables. We didn't have, like, some the stand beautiful. We had a lot of people who wanted to help. We have uh, people who wanted to do something. And I remember, really, it was queue in the kitchen because people in first day days of invasion they wanted to help they wanted to do something we have only like one hour per doing something because people wanted wanted to help shift like shift yeah and it was cold but i i don't remember i remember it was cold but i remember uh, but the people was it, it was like a, some kind of adrenaline uh, we were okay uh, next step like some people uh, i don't know what happened some ukrainians decided to uh, it's enough for me, maybe I'm tired, I want to uh, take a break and uh, we didn't have a lot of people, we were sad, but like next step, like uh, now we had a lot of foreigners and of course it's inspired and it's like, uh, uh, I don't know, 
I think the best uh, stuff for me, uh, it's like the best things when I see our volunteers, when I see like some guys, uh, uh, soldiers, and when I see some volunteers from abroad uh, who want to help. When I see these people, I want to continue work and I want to for, for do some additional stuff because uh, I know that we help uh, soldiers and like when all these people around the world uh, help us, we can't stop. Yeah, that's really important. And I know that people from so many different countries oh, are working here. You have like international embassy and all the flags behind us. Yeah, sometimes it's like uh, my personal hero guy from Uruguay. Uh, I know about Uruguay, but when this guy arrived, it was like, how, why this guy? Uh, and he said, I live in front of this embassy, Russian embassy, and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't be like to live my uh, ordinary life. No, I decided to help. And guy from Uruguay or some people like, we know uh, some European countries, they are in, in one bubble with us, but some people from some uh, uh, far away like, countries. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was like superheroes. Yeah, so sometimes Russian embassy can do a good job. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like inspire people, come and volunteer in Ukraine. Yulia, to sum it all up, what is the best and the most effective way to support you? Uh, yeah, I think it's we have it can be like a different kinds of uh, support. It can be like some if you share information about kitchen, about volunteers in Ukraine, it's like one stuff. You can help us your hands, you can cut something, you can uh, bring some vegetables for us. You can like send like a donation. You can help and you know frontline volunteering kitchen now it's like big community. It's not only these people who prepare this food. It's like people who help us uh, with uh, ammunition. It's like some guys who help us in orphanages and a lot, a lot of people. And if you want to help, uh, like one million options. And I want to thank you for this beautiful community of people. This is a really inspiring place. And this aroma of Ukrainian borscht. <laughs> and I imagine how heartwarming it is in the trenches. And we yeah. still have to fight this war. It continues. We still need your support. Yeah. And visiting places like that, working for a frontline kitchen, is an example of the strength that you can get. So thank you so much. We will leave all the links to the social media of um, Frontline Kitchen, Volunteer Kitchen. Uh, remember to subscribe. Subscribe to our channel too to discover more about Ukraine and beautiful people from all over the world who come and support us. Slava Ukraini! Heroem Slava! Thank you. Thank you very much. You are very nice. Thank you. Thank you.